We return to the adventures of the mighty Robo Daddy himself, Geppetto Fingers. <laughs> I will admit that wasn't a reference to last series. I just happened to call him Geppetto Fingers. Uh, that's, that's his last name. Whereas the guy from last series, his nickname was Fingers. He was good at crafting, but that wasn't actually his name. Now, on the topic of characters coming back from last series, I asked you guys yesterday what you wanted me to name the Thrumwolf that we started with. And there, there were a good few suggestions. The highest upvoted one as of current time of recording, which is 5am, by the way, uh, was The Horn. As a reference, of course, to one of our other characters from last series, a man called The Horn. Uh, it also works, obviously, because it's a dog with a, with a horn. Do I need to say any more? We also randomly, while I was setting the base up, got a rolling, what's it called? A needle roll, that's it, called Finn that dropped in a drop pod and it said that it needed tending, but it was immediately, like it dropped and then it immediately said something like um, animal tamed. Let me just go to the history tab a second. Now the history tab is going to look a little different. When I came back to play this, it turns out because of some hilarious rim save a hilarity the save game was gone so i've had to rebuild the the base as as close as i could get it from last episode everything is identical the base is identical the robot sorry let's go the star everything is exactly where we left it the research the world seed is the same the only difference is there isn't a road on the map this time uh roads it turns out aren't seeded so even though it's the same seed on the same planet and the identical tile it is a uh, a slightly different map in that regard but besides that everything is the same we've got 13 hours before our first wave turns up before our first thing that we have to survive against turns up i'm not too bothered about it i think our sentry turrets are more than going to be able to handle whatever the game can throw at us at this stage i've made sure i've tried to make sure anyway they're a bit closely knitted together so the enemy can't just like i said warp between them we'll move that one slightly more south in the hopes that it gets a, a, a much better area of coverage yeah that should deal with it so they can't get to our base at all there is an argument for maybe putting all the turrets in the same area and maybe right outside the front door and then having our guy stand out there as bait so the turrets can take him down. But I like having a big area like this covered because that means if we get manhunter animals or whatever and our guy's outside, he might not be caught with his pants down. Quite literally because I also forgot to do the plumbing for the most part. But we're identical to where we were yesterday. Somebody said in the comment section as well, and this was absolutely exactly what I had in mind. Some... I thought that was a mouse then. It's one of our fucking drones. <laughs> Somebody said this guy is basically just Mr. House. And in hindsight, yeah, that's exactly what he's going to be. On the surface, a friendly robot man. A guy who builds robots, sells robots to people to help out with their day-to-day -day job. You know, big factories, lots of automation and industry and whatever. But then under the surface is actually stockpiling a ridiculous amount of nuclear warheads. Just a staggering amount of war crimes ready to go off. And I think the prison labor is going to be really fun with this as well. Bear in mind, there are all sorts of fun things we can do to prisoners to maybe mechanicize, me mechan mechanicalize, mechanize, that's the word, mechanize them a little bit more as well. I don't know if this thing does anything special. Um, Sorry, what was that? Borg nanite injection into a sentient plant body. Ah, inject a syringe of special nanites to create a new Borg drone. Oh, we could inject our little rolling cactus there with nano machines, son. I know we're pissing around. Let's get this trade beacon down as soon as possible. I'd love to also get down uh, a comms console. But obviously this small little house isn't going to work. We need to start planning out the factory, right? And we need to start planning out the factory. Not only that, we need to get uh, a... Oh, again, I want another series because we, we kind of started last series and never got to finish it. A wall around the entire map, I think, would be really, really cool because it's something we've never done before. And it actually, given last series, didn't take too long to do. And we've got robots that can craft. I assume that means stone cut as well. And we've got robots that can haul and build. So the robots, if we set them up right, can automatically build the wall for us. Sure, it'd be extremely slow, but our guy can keep researching, building. We can start planning out while the robots do all of that in the background. I think that could be quite fun. So we want a sort of bigger... Like a big factory building, kind of in the center that we can work with. I want to be careful not to cover up. But like we've got obviously the, the the fields are in a slightly different place as well. The the fertility, so I might want to move some of the crops around to match those. But I think we just need a big old fuck off starting factory building to to get us going with. You know, I'm thinking something quite large too. Um, how much of steel have we got? 650. We can do 38 by 29. Um, gives us a center block. If we do. Let's do 37 by 29 instead. That way we've got two central blocks. There should be a, a direct middle point of the factory there. Kind of plan things out a little bit better. We can stick a pillar right in the middle or something like that as well. 37 by 29. We're also not covering up much farmland. I will need to reinstall that turret though. Because it's in kind of a kind of a shitty area like that. But that will give us a nice basis for the factory to branch out of. Then we can always stick little buildings around that. Might be better to work out where the middle of the map is. And obviously build our corporate headquarters there. And then build the factory out around it. Like kind of similar to what we were doing last series. 
That's all right. I think for the time being, let's just get a big old building down. Let's get some of the blast furnaces going today. I want some automation, damn it. These robots aren't going to build themselves. Well, I mean, eventually, isn't that kind of the point? A raid from the Triam Kinship. It's two people. Okay, we've got Raccoon and we've got Rotrivia. Club and Knife versus Sentry Turrets. I still, in hindsight, now that I think about it, I, it might actually be a better idea to try and bunch these turrets up a little bit more. Let's 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 bring you over here before the raiders. Hopefully we can do this before the raiders get too close. Let's just quickly drag that over, Robo Daddy. Right, already we're already working on it. Good shit, good shit. There we are. Okay, that's fine. Now where's the other turret? See, I've just built around that one, which has kind of made it a little bit pointless. Um, let's bring that one up there if we can. And I should really get the animals to safety as well, if you don't mind there. Um, area one. Get out of here, little animals. Okay, good shit. Go, go, go. Get out of there. What are they? No way. They already defeat. Uranium sentry gun. Beaten by a man with a club. Ridiculous. Oh, it, it, it took him down, though. We might have some prisoners here. The war crimes can begin earlier than scheduled. Blow up my damn machines. Do you know how Robo? Do you know what? How much that upsets Robo Daddy to see his machines destroyed like that? Steal what they can and leave. What are you gonna steal? Fucking nothing. That's what. Yeah, yeah. You've learned a lesson. Oh, we've got to sell. What am I gonna do? I guess I'll turn this into a. We'll turn that into a prison for the time being, and then we'll build something a bit more permanent. We just built a massive room after all, so we might be able to. Oh, there we go. Perfect. We might be able to turn that into, at least part of it, into a, a prisoner processing facility, for lack of a better word. What, another one? That's not how this works. Wave-based survival, two waves back to back. A uh, group of tribes people. It's one person. Okay, that's fine. That's absolutely okay. That's, that's probably just what we'd expect. I, th I think that's still some of the early sort of difficulty of the game kicking in there, independent of wave-based survival. Let's see what he gets up to. I should also... Let's recall all the robots a second. Hang on. Um, right. Re recall all. And then... I mean, that's a... Excuse me. What, what part of recall all do you not understand there? Thank you. On the plus side, it is a double bed, so we could also capture this other dude as well. Right, where are my turrets? So you got one there, one there. Is that one uninjured? It is, but it's at... So it's already fired off 12 shots. What about this one? That one's still fine. So hopefully we can bait him up here and he's just going to be caught in this... Caught quite decently in that turret's area. Maybe we could bait him around and use Robo Daddy as as a target. Yeah, this this works fine as long as we can stay on top of outrunning him. Okay, okay, that's it. Bring it down here. Turret, please do not shoot Robo Daddy. This is where the shield belt is gonna come in very, very handy because we can we can run straight towards this turret and if it fires around us, that's that's completely fine. Good god, this is horrible. This is absolutely horrible. We decided to steal what they can and leave again. I don't think so. What's he doing? Stealing uranium sentry turret? He can't do that. Shoot him or something. I'm stealing uranium. Is he actually going to pick it up and carry it away? You know what? I'm glad he wasn't there long enough for us to find out. Oh, tax have been built, of course. Right, okay. So if we start going into a next level of research now, then in theory, when we get that... Um, when, when we get that tithe from our research settlement, it should help build up a little bit towards it. What do we even want to start with? What the hell do we want to start with? Bone replacement? That sounds pretty fun. I've not heard of that before. Medical system expansion revived. Uh, replace a broken bone. Oh my god, he's telling me bones can break. Oh, don't tell me there's a pelvis replacement. You wouldn't do this to me, would you? Prosthetic radius, humerus. Uh, prosthetic pelvis. I hate this. This is the worst mod we've ever... It is the worst mod we've ever included. Concrete production. Hang on a second. If we want some cheap... Easy to produce materials that aren't something important like steel, which in the end of the day we could use to make more machinery. I think concrete production is really on brand to like these big, brutalist Soviet concrete blocks of factories. Yeah. Okay, I'm in. Get out! Get, get out of my colony! So, somebody suggested that the reason we're still getting Wanderers joining us is because of the mod I was using to try and import characters from one of the save games, just so we could see them around in the world. People like Fingers and Horn and whatever else. But obviously, they're not compatible with this mod pack, which I realized afterwards. I thought it might still work, but it, there's, there's so many mods difference that it, I just couldn't import them. I've since removed that mod, but they are still turning up. Just to reiterate here, in Incident Tweaker, I have disabled Wanderer joining. Chance to happen, zero. And same with, same with Man in Black, they still turn up. So I don't know what, what is causing that at all. I'm just going to keep banishing them. What I think in the future is we'll treat them as... How do I phrase this? Free labor. By which I mean we're just going to bundle them straight into the fucking prison if they turn up anymore. Right, let's go ahead and... Uh, speaking of bundling people into a fucking prison, let's see if we can expand this a little bit. 
35. That's fine. We'll start with we'll start with that. It's just enough room for what, like a bed, a toilet. That's all we really need to start off with. Now, as much as I want to make our prisoner's lives as horrible as possible in exchange for him smashing up our turrets, I feel like a regular bed. I mean, what's the the simple bed uses 30, the wooden bed uses 45. Um I mean, there's an argument to be made about giving them the wooden bed instead, just because it will keep them happier. And if they're happier, they're more likely to work. And right now, we could do more with, until, at least until we get, obviously, the robots, the automation set up. Having people happy so they can work for us is probably a bit more valuable than committing just horrible atrocities that go against the Geneva Convention. So for the time being, I'm going to give him a sink and I'll give him a, uh, a toilet as well. And then, just to clear up any confusion, people are very confused about this. We call basins in the UK sinks as well as like kitchen sinks. You would just always refer to it as a sink unless you're um unless you're a tall a great devourer. It's hunting fin for food. Oh, that's fine then. Um I'm not gonna be doing anything to stop that. So you're on your own there, Chief. We should really repair that turret. Like high priority. Fin the needle roll is dead. Can you blame me? I'm not even sure what I'm quite looking at there, to be honest with you. Goodbye, Fin the Needle Roll. It's gone. I see why they call you the Great Devourer, rather than just, you know, like the casual nibbler. Let's get this set up as soon as possible so that Robo Daddy can have his bathroom back. Because right now he's having to drink out of a pond, because apparently it, that is within the rules, rather than going out there and... <laughs> rather than going into the prison room and drinking from the steel basin, he'd rather drink from a shitty, stagnant pond. Let's go ahead and resolve our bills, then, from, from these. I'm um, turning also resolve True, yeah, there we are. I thought I did that yesterday. Oh, right, but of course we had to rebuild the save. Two months have been also resolved. We've had 300 points added to the research pool. So I assume that just, yeah. Is that just, uh, oh, look at that. Oh, is that where he's researching now? What does that mean? 300 points have been added to the research. Surely that should be half finished. Unless there's a way I apply that that I just don't know about quite yet. Um, I'll look into that system. This system was kind of added after... After the last time we played Empires, so I need to look into how that happens. Um, unless he, like, used it to research things faster, not entirely sure. But hey, concrete production was only 600 points, so that's, like, really, really simple, straightforward stuff. More importantly, something the robots can do. We've got the robots churning the concrete to build the structures. Saves on the middleman of stone cutting, right? We will still put down a stone cutter's bench, because that will have some applications as well. Um, electric stone cutter's bench. Yeah, I'm going to turn this into the this into the prison area. If we get anywhere, we can put down a quarry for some quarried stone. Ah, uh, kind of. Man, I should have put this in a different zone, shouldn't I? Put the quarry there and then attach the prison to the front of the quarry. That was just kind of a temporary thing anyway. In the long term, this would be better. Having something like this down and then uh, put, put some big old walls around that. We'll wait until we've got the concrete production going, though, so that I'm not wasting even more steel on another temporary prison. Let's go basic wooden stone cutters table. Again, for the robots. And I mean, it doesn't really matter that it's outdoors there. We need a little bit more steel to actually kickstart that. So we'll go ahead and set that one as... Something to be permanently minded. Let's have you working on that straight away. And he set up a decent schedule too. Right now, I've kind of kept him on the kind of open schedule. Let's give him two hours of wreck when he wakes up. Let's give him all day of work and then another two hours of wreck at night. I mean, this guy should be fine with that. We've got to be a little bit more careful with things though because he is neurotic, right? Or was it neurotic I gave him in the end? Um, fast learner, industrious great. Oh, I didn't actually give him that. To be fair, that would be really overpowered if we gave him neurotic on top of that too. And 168 silver. Wow, you shouldn't have. The manager mod is going to come in really, really handy this time around too. Because obviously the robots will, if they haven't, if, like just then when I hadn't given them a job, they won't do anything. So we need to make sure that we've all re always got something kind of lined up. And if we have Robo Daddy do the managing, that saves us having, us, the player, having to do that. But it also saves us having to kind of wait for him to go idle before anything gets done. Because obviously how am I supposed to know what jobs are available, right? So when he was researching, the robots really had nothing to do there. I need to make sure that I've got a management bench down as soon as possible then. Uh, m m manager. Basic manager desk. There we are. Oh, God. Um, uh, hang on. There's, there's, there's room for it here somewhere. Let me just think. We could fit it in there. We could genuinely fit it in there. Oh, God. Look at all the botch construction. It's sewage pipes as well. It's like the easiest thing for them to do. God, these robots, they might be fast, but they are complete garbage. Don't let, them, don't let them know I said that, but they are complete shit right now. Okay, we've got a stone cutter's bench. What stone do we have access to then? Uh, we've got granite, we've got marble, and we've got sandstone. It doesn't really matter which in particular we use. As I recall, the, um, the concrete production takes any stone bricks. So that should be, or, or it might just be regular stone as well, uh, rather than actually converting it into blocks like stone chunks. Let's go for granite then, seeing as granite is the, the, the most durable one. What should we do that to as well? I mean, the robots, we might as well just say do it forever and just let the fucking robots go buck wild on that, huh? Get out! 
You're not allowed anymore. No. Farming traders up. My god, we've had a lot of traders this. I wonder if it's something to do with the um something to do with the wave-based storyteller mechanic. That we're getting so many people speaking of which I also haven't put down an orbital trade beacon. I keep saying it and I keep forgetting many because we haven't got anywhere to put down the comms console. Now the orbital trade beacon will provide the food that we need for our day-to-day -day life. However, that won't include prisoners, which we intend on having quite a quite a sizable prison, I think, this time around. So that unfortunately won't work so much. We need to clone this as well. How are we looking? We've got 60 stone blocks already. What do we need for the concrete production? Uh, excuse me a second. Concrete mixer is 100 steel. Oh, 100 steel on two components. Why did I read it as needing bricks then? Because I'm... I've, I've lost my mind. I've lost my mind on account of staying up till 5 a.m. to play this. All right, what have we got then? There we are. That's all. So it was any stone chunks. Cool. Uh, produce it from any stone chunks. I don't know why you specifically choose... I assume there's not like concrete made from granite or concrete made from like separate ver versions. I assume it's all just granite, right? Oh, sorry, concrete. Yeah, just all outputs concrete. So it makes no real difference to me. Fine. I suppose if you had, like, a, say, for example, a quarry on marble, which we have over here, then you'd want to set to marble chunks because they'd be more convenient to get to, but surely it would default to that anyway. I am not sure. I'm not sure, and I'm not going to pretend to know. Oh, God. Our wave three, or our wave two, I should say, is a raid from Unimatrix 14, i.e. a fucking Borg. Um, L, 50 of 34. 50 of 34. I don't think that quite works. Um, it's got Borg drone armor and a Borg plasma cannon. Borg weapon designed to inflict maximum amount of damage. These plasma cannons are often used in case of targets deemed unsuitable or unwanted for assimilation. I won't say that personally. 43 damage, 64% armor penetration. What? Uh, let's take, for example, our men, uh, Ursh here. We're going to imprison her in a second. Um, 12 damage. A revolver does 12 damage. This thing does 43 Holy shit. Bear in mind, revolvers aren't exactly weak. They're just somewhat inaccurate. Um, fuck, I don't even know what to do then in that regard. Uh, and our turrets are our turrets are operational, right? Or at least two of them. We've got a trade caravan. I wonder if we could convince the trade caravan to, to get into a scrap with this Borg so we don't have to. Let's use you as bait. Hello, it's me, your good friend, Ursht. Here to bait you into, hopefully... No, 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 stop that. Oh, God. Holy shit. It hit her in the arm, but destroyed her lung? Phased, phased pulse annihilator. Oh, phased pulse annihilated. Urge left lung and injured her right arm. Her left lung and her right arm, so it pierced through her left lung and came out the other side and hit her in the arm? I don't even want to think about it. Um. Huh. Yeah, that's... Uh, oh, the robots. Shit. Call them back. Call them back. Call them back. Recall all. Come back. Robots. Return. Oh, come on. Get out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there. Have we made any concrete yet? Not quite. Fuck off. Okay, we're fine. Trade caravan. I need you to deal with this Borg for me. What is, what's it doing now? What's it shooting at? The sentry gun. Oh my god, it's out of range. Okay. Uh, we need to we need to uninstall these. We need to uninstall it. Otherwise, it's just going to destroy it and the uranium sentry gun can't fire back. Sorry, not today. Thank you. Right, let's run over here. Let's also... I mean, we don't need to worry about that one so much, I shouldn't think. <gasps> the fucking dog. Home. Home little dog. Oh, the the, the, the the people are coming in. We're fine. Well, let's see how one Borg deals with... Uh, what are we looking at here? Ten human tribals. Uh, the arrows bounced right off of him. To absolutely no one's surprise. Surely they can just overwhelm him, right? Death by a thousand cuts. This is going to be interesting. Okay. They actually did a good job. Uh, hang on, he's alive. Bleeding out in eight hours. Are you guys thinking what I'm thinking? We might have just captured the most valuable prisoner I could ever think of. A fucking Borg drone. Give me that. Holy shit. So he's got all those Borg implants, all those Borg nanites and whatnot. Makes him work faster, harder, doesn't need recreation, social, anything. Uh, let's remove his exoskeleton then. Borg drone armor, get rid of that. Because that makes him way, way too tanky with that on. Um, and we also got his gun as well. Is that worth anything? I'm sure, it's got to have a decent 800 market value for a weapon like that. That's um, unexpected, but it was pretty inaccurate. He didn't actually do any damage to any of the uh, traders that we had turned up. It'd be a war crime to put. <laughs> I don't know why I'm asking this. I feel like if you have to preempt anything with the phrase, 
I wonder if it's a war crime. What I was going to say is I, I wonder if it's a war crime to to put our other prisoner in the same room as the assimilating death bot. Again, I feel like it's a fairly... What? I feel like it's a fairly obvious, uh, obvious answer, huh? You two will be the best of friends. And then so will you in a second, but we've got to wait till we get a bit more room first. Oh, that's it. Work for us. That's fine. Our research has been used today. You have 300 points remaining. Oh, I see. So it obviously actively consumes it as you do resource tasks then, or research tasks. That's pretty good. Uh, the biofuel refining. That unlocks the bioreactors. Yeah, okay. How about that for a better idea? Prisoners that we're not using, it's kind of like right now where they're just in storage. We could quite literally put them in storage in a, in a biofuel reactor. I like that plan. Well, we're going to have to give that a go. Uh, no trade beacon. Oh, non-roofed. Oh, my bad. I was only putting it in there so it would interact with the um, so it interact with the cabinet so that we could actually sell some stuff. I didn't realize it actually actively had to be outside. Let's go ahead and get that reinstalled straight away. My bad. No, I didn't actually interact with any of these traders that turned up. Very well, we got 168 silver, which we're trying to save up to build a quarry in one of our settlements. I think it probably wasn't worth it. Sure, we could have sold them some some stone bricks, perhaps some wood, maybe a little tiny bit of gold, but we do need all of that, to be honest. Um, what are those? Wolf chicken feathers. What are they? Colorful and pretty. Quite useless, but someone might pay for them as a decorative object. Oh. I don't even know where we got that from. Oh, maybe. I, I have an, a, a theory of how this probably works. If we have research left over, and at midnight, or whenever that event triggers, if it sees we've got X amount of research left, maybe it just triggers then. I'm not entirely sure. Um, what do we need for that then? We need a high-tech research bench. Okay, so now we need to start working on our actual our actual factory then if we want to really start automating things and getting those next levels of research. You guys you guys, good friends yet? The best of pals? <laughs> I feel so sorry for Raccoon. And concrete walls. There we go. That's what I'm after. How much have we got already? 260. These robots are not fucking around and that's great news. So let's go ahead and swap out the walls that we've already built. I think that'll help out quite a lot just just purely based on the fact that we'll get some steel that we can obviously invest elsewhere. I love how great this start has been though, huh? A Borg prisoner, which is fantastic. We got ourselves Raccoon, the just free prisoner, essentially. Tried to steal a uranium turret, got gunned down. And then of course, Ursht, who whose time is very much numbered and she doesn't even know it yet. And it's concrete production. Man, this, is, this has been really, really helpful. What's it like though? 465. So it's obviously a method, I would say, of, of producing much more out of or, or, or making those stone blocks go a lot further in terms of pure building resources but of course it's nowhere near as durable as granite marble um in fact i think it's less durable than sandstone right sandstone's what four six five as well i'm not entirely sure i'm just using it purely for the purely for the simplicity like the, the ease of use the amount that we can actually produce isn't that the whole point of concrete and again the, the kind of massive brutalist giant structure in the middle of our base is going to look pretty good too. Right, let's get all this shit tidied up. There we go. And then we'll start putting down some other small prisoner cells. I feel like the prisoner cell, this one is too large. This is too large for a prisoner cell. We need enough room for a bed, a toilet, and a basin, and that's it. So I'm going to have them in a very small zone. Now normally, of course, I do big prisons, where we have quite a large unit um, with all of the prisoners together, but I want to avoid any prison breaks when it's just one dude incapable of violence. It means that we've got to spend a lot more resources on turrets inside our own base, which with Wave Base of Arby, you never know, we might get a prison break followed immediately by quite a large raid. We can't run that risk. Oh, hello. Rare thrombos. A small herd of thrombos. They're royal thrombos too. Oh, shit. So that's added, obviously, by the, the royal thrombo mod, funnily enough. Um, they're somewhat rarer than th regular thrombos, as far as I recall, but I think we see them genuinely when we've got this one enabled more than regular thrombos. Market value 8,000. Jesus. They dropped the Royal Thrombo Fur, which is insane. Um, what have they got in terms of DPS? 9.03 melee DPS, 16 hour nozzle interval. These would make some insane pets. Now, we do have Xenobiotic Patcher and a load of... Uh, the, basically, the way the, the Xenobiotic Patcher mod works is it looks at an animal. It'll say, hey, if it has a leg and you have an implant that fits a leg, you can then give that to your, your new Thrombo. So, we, in theory, could give this Thrombo four architect legs, for example, two bionic eyes... Obviously, I was going to say a big fuck off arm, but probably not. Although there are mods that allow us to add extra arms to like different parts of the body, like, like mechanical arms. Kind of like Doc, Dr. Octopus style. Man, these would be the dream, wouldn't they? Getting some of these and turn them into just bionic guard dogs, essentially. We've got another raid. Another raid from Unimatrix 14. Wait, that's not... It's not time for another raid yet. I feel like wave-based survival isn't quite working as planned. I feel what we've got here is just really aggressive raids 
Maybe I should increase the time between the wave base survival raids then by double because we seem to be getting a raid every two cycles of wave base survival. We get two raids. So maybe I should double it out. That's not the way it's intended to work. Oh, look, this one's got nanoprobes. So what this one, what this means is this, if this one uses a melee attack on a person, there's a chance that that person can be assimilated and also turned into a Borg. So we might see some of these people here unless they fucking haul ass also turn into Borg drones. Orion, you need to move unless they can bring it down faster. Oh, God. Oh, God. He's gotten very lucky so far. He's down. Holy shit. You were staring death in the face, my friend. Allied villager, a dead threat. Oh, of course. How could I forget to talk about that? Everybody in the comment section said you missed out on a really obvious future armor joke. That being Dad's Friendly Robot Company. So we are now called Dad's Friendly Robot Company. In, in honor of that great suggestion. It was completely staring me in the face with that that we called Robot Daddy. We want to build a friendly robot. We were called Robocorp, which, by the way, is the name of, obviously, that is the actual name of the corporation in Future Armor. It's called Mum's Robocorp, but then, obviously, it's Mum's Friendly Robot Company as the, the kind of parent company. That's cool. Another robot. Hang on. Six hours. <laughs> this is so dangerous. We're just building a massive prison of, quite frankly, murderous death bots. I think we're actually going to be able to keep this one as well. Insane. Medical emergency is that 15? Yeah, 15 or 14. Wow. There we go. Good as new. Nothing to worry about. Right, let's get let's get his toilet plunged. I don't believe... They never addressed it in the TV show. I'm pretty sure Borg don't need to shit, but that might be a thirst bladder. Apparently they do. So 97%. But they don't eat though, right? Oh, they do eat. We need a warden then. Otherwise, my people are going to starve. Okay. Um... See, now this is an issue because we've got one man to now warden four prisoners when this lady is... When eventually we have a spare prison. That's exactly what that one was built was was for her. Um, obviously, that didn't quite go to plan, did it? Right, let's get this one copied over. Put down yet another prison. Got to make sure it's all plumbed in too. You know what? Let's trade with these guys. We've got to have something that we can sell them to... We've got three meals left, bollocks. Um, we'll sell them some components. We just need enough. Obviously, we needed 500... Silver, right, to be able to build the quarry in our base, and that will in turn give us way more profit. We're gonna lose a little bit of upfront things to to obviously help us out here in the form of components. I have to do a little bit more mining. Um, do you want these wolf chicken feathers too? There's seven nine. How much do we need? Like four hundred and thirty-two, four hundred and twenty-two. Like maths, maths is not my strong point right now. So I want a few components. Then was it? Ah, uh, it's close enough. Three hundred thirty-two. That'll do. So it's trading away thirteen components. Oh, we're giving the ironwood first. Hey, there we go. Can we save on a component now? No, unfortunately not. Um, oh, wait, wait, of course we can. 323, 44. That'll do it. Okay, so we managed to keep down the component cost a little bit more. Now we should have enough silver to be able to build the quarry in our in our settlement. And then that'll allow us to do more research if we wanted to, for example. Shit. 15 and 14 gotten a sick from an infection in the torso. I don't know that that's how that works. Caravan from Dad's Friendly Robot Company. They're a combat supplier. Okay, we'll see if we can make a little bit more cash out of this one. Actually, before I forget and before I get tempted to spend this gold that we've just painstakingly tried to bring together, let's go ahead and sink that straight into a quarry. Oh, it's 250. You fool. I just scammed myself. Okay, so when that's finished building, we should be able to sink in a few more workers. Bear in mind, right now we've got, um, we've got another two workers spare. I assume we start losing money. I'm just going to assign them now so that when that when the, when the quarry is built, it'll immediately kick in. 417. Just remember that, and we'll see how much we can really turn from this. Sorry, Ursht. Oh, was she an inventor as well? Fast walker, night owl. She's got nine crafting. She is an inventor. You're almost perfect for the colony. Just a shame that this is a lone character playthrough. Otherwise, you would have made you would have made Robo Daddy a, a lovely wife. But he is is uh, he's only here for his. <laughs> His robot body pillow wife is there. I said it. Oh, all the coffee's coming in. Hey, what about the what about the fucking food though? Huh? Two hundred and two rice. We need a bigger base. We need to start moving into here on a more permanent basis because we've got nowhere to cook food, and we're down to our last. Oh, it said we only had. It said we only had three packets of our meals, right? We've quite clearly got seventeen. And what the hell it was talking about then? Um, let's get a bit more concrete production done. We've got one hundred and thirteen here. We need just enough to be able to put a decent sized house for our guy in here as well. Let's do that. 12 by 12. Yeah. Because that gives us enough room for bedroom, bathroom. Then all we need is kitchen. And then we can use some of the rest of this space as a research room. And then we'll have a big... If, if we use this area as like a research zone and, and stockpile, this area can all be factory floor. I'll start moving this stuff over kind of preemptively. So it'll take a while for the robots to actually haul all of the things that come out of these shelves. Um, we'll put the vanimetric power cell over here. Just provide a bit more 
energy to the grid kind of preemptively. We'll get all their bases moved over. Do you want to move the base server now? I guess we could, yeah. I think the robots can move their own bases. I don't think we have to actively do that either. Um, go ahead and line. We've got a builder, so we might as well put that one in there. The garden bots, though, we'll put... I guess we'll put those a bit closer to the door. I was going to try and be a bit more effective about it, but realistically, what's it going to make? Like six squares difference? The ER bot is a different kettle of fish. The ER bot, ER bot we should put right next to our guy's bed. Ideally, we should build him a personalized hospital. Now, there's a really, really cool one we've got in this mod pack called the Med Bay, which is essentially an automatic machine that when you uh, stand within its area, it will... Uh, what is it? Compu yeah, this is it. So the uh, military computer system, medicine, and, and that sort of train gives a big kind of three by... I think it's three by three area that allows you to stand in the zone and be healed automatically. It's a very, very cool plan. Uh, this is one of the few ways I thought that we could actually manage on a... Manage on a one-person playthrough, because normally it'd be kind of impossible so can get hit with a plague or whatever, or, or some sort of disease that knocks you down so that you can't move, like, the advanced stages of the plague, for example. There'd be no one's tendency. We would just die at that point, right? Or if he got somehow damaged, got hit by a bolt of lightning, for example, and needed rescuing something purely random, you would normally be dead in any other situation. So, you need something... Diarrhea from dirty water. Why? Oh, for Colin, what's wrong with here? Why are you drinking? Oh, because it counts as, I guess, dirty water because it's untreated, maybe. Uh, I mean, it is, but small disease risk. Yeah, I guess we just got unlucky with that one then. Texas bill. There we are. Okay. Uh, what did we get this time around? So if we go to the settlements tab, even though we're auto-resolving, we can check the history somewhere. Uh, don't remember how in hindsight. It's been, look, it's been, it's been a good month or so since I last played with this mod. So understandably, all information about it's completely gone from my brain. Oh, we need to enact some policies too soon. Um... How is it we see the history? I feel like I'm losing my mind. Unless they've taken it away. Might be the case. Uh, Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I'm sure it's not important. Anyway, it's still 417 because the quarry's not built yet anyway. So it really makes no difference. Wanderer joins. No. Where did you even come from? Get out of here. Oh, fucking hell. I mean, to be fair, we're going to have the world's greatest prison in the world because we're just getting a handful of free prisoners. We're just getting constant free prisoners. <laughs> I know yesterday I called this... Uh, a factorio meets war crimes. This is just prison architects at this point. <laughs> just the constant influx. I mean, it is genuinely like prison architects in the way that we're getting consistent prisoner deliveries at this point, right? Good God. Right, let's get this other furniture reinstalled as quickly as possible. No, stop that. Robert Addy and Savina chatted about... Just... Tried to chat up Savina. Did not agree to the hookup. Are you that lonely? What about your robots, you weird man? <laughs> I'd say, as that was coming out of my mouth, I was like... I don't know. Wait, maybe I'm the weird man. Quarry has been constructed. There we are. So if we go settlements now and then... Sorry? 14... Oh, his infection. How's he doing? Extreme. I don't think we're going to save him, are we? 93% immunity, 8% infection. No, never mind. We're good. Nothing to worry about, huh? Right, let's actually get a door. I was thinking, why the hell aren't they building this place? Let's get a fucking door in the bedroom, you fool. We'll actually build the bathroom in here as well. Let's build a little, his little private corner. Uh, 147 silver. So that's from last cycle. Um, so the quarry's just been built. So we should be able to see the new... Profit from that. Total profit, 1,167 silver. Incredible. Oh, Unimatrix 14. In a drop pod? Three of them? What the hell is it? They sent a crawler. Oh, they're in line with the mechanoids. I suppose that makes sense. Have you got nanoprobes? So we got nanoprobes there, and we have a cannon. Uh, we've got a trader, though, so there's nothing to worry about. Hopefully, they'll fight the traders again. Uh, our guys get to safety. Animals get to area one for the animals. Oh, I think he never left, actually. Okay. Go, traders. We might actually see someone assimilated this time, though, to be fair. Oh, my God. That guy got immediately done in. Oh, watch those grenades. You bitch. <laughs> I can't believe you do this to me. Um, 19 of 35. We might be able to capture you if we're fast. Robo Daddy, get in there. Capture, capture yourself a robot. They'll make for good studies, if nothing else. Go, go, go. Four hours. Come on. Get him get him in there. Four, four of those he cracks diarrhea. I don't think Borg can get diarrhea. I think that's that's irrelevant. Right. Ten to him. Three hours. Come on. We, can we save him? That was grenades, and we're using no medicine, so this might be a difficult one to save. And I imagine we're definitely in line for a shitload of infections, too. Are they... Are the Borg gone? Are the Borg defeated, or did they f flee? Uh, what is that? Oh my god, I thought it was an alien or something then for a second, like a xenomorph. Um, I assume all the Borg are defeated. I, I should have really been paying attention, but I saw I saw another Borg drone line on the floor there, and I was like, hey, that's free real estate. Go ahead and transfer a raccoon into his own bedroom 
in a second as well. I, I still feel like it's probably going to backfire having 50 of, of 34 there. We could use this as kind of a kind of a jail cell, kind of a holding cell, and then the these is more of a permanent prison for our people. Let's also chop down some of these damn trees that are right outside our prison doors. Yeah, let's go cut plants and even the even those we can't harvest from yet. So I think we just concrete over the whole thing. See, do you actually need concrete? Oh, you actually need concrete now to build concrete. That makes sense. Um, color version takes long to build, but is also less ugly, so it doesn't have the beauty negative. Oh, that's quite cool. Okay, so we got well, we got black concrete, yellow concrete, dark gray, white. I feel like a nice white concrete floor across the whole thing. Oh, that's actually 500 steel. Ah, never mind. Maybe maybe just regular concrete in that case is all right. 2,800. Fuck. Okay, hang on. Let's, let's prioritize the important things here. Okay, bedroom gets wood. Prison cells can have concrete because they we, we need maximum war crimes here. Right, so let's make sure they've got concrete. And then the actual factory floor, I guess, isn't super relevant right now because we don't actually have anything there yet. We might as well have the hauling bots help out because we've got two hauling bots. We've only got one crafting bot. So we might as well say critical clear all and then allow chunks in this one, right? I don't think I allowed chunks in these. Uh, excuse me, storage. Oh, I did. Shit. Why are they not hauling chunks then? Just like completely ignoring them. Maybe they did haul the chunks and they got ground up already. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but we, we could mark some as designated for hauling just to try and try and help out. Because really the limiting factor here is the fact that we've only got one crafting button, obviously one concrete production. Let's also make sure you are not hauling urgently in that case. Oh, there we go. That actually worked as well. Look. So now because the delivery bots are bringing in chunks, this guy can get the concrete produced so much faster. Hey, that's good. Only a small amount of automation, but it is kind of a big dif difference here. Are you what the hell are you wearing? Geppetto Fingers is now a beekeeper? <laughs> Cloth hazmat suit. To be fair, it could be a lot worse. I assume that gives some global work speed minus 10%. Oh, no, no, no. Take that off. Never wear that again. The final thing I want to get done today, given that we have answered that age-old question of do Borg ship, is septic tanks. Septic tanks we can use to... You can already see that we started to pollute the ground a little bit anyway. Um, but septic tanks will allow us to use that as a... Well, I mean a biofuel, but also as a composter. So it would deal with any sort of power or food issues if we run into either of those. How are we doing for food, by the way? 30 packages of items. Oh, because it's coming from the orbital trade beacon. Right, got it. It doesn't take into account, as far as I know, prisoners, though. So we need to be very careful about how fast we consume the food. Oh, there we go. 500 points of research have been used to research septic tanks. That's really cool. So they basically did septic tanks on our behalf. Ah, oh, very nice. Got it, got it, got it. Well, let's put down then a septic tank somewhere somewhat convenient. I'm, tr I'm trying to move everything, obviously, over into this new somewhat larger base. Um, it doesn't really matter where. Any anywhere is fine. I probably shouldn't back it up against here, seeing as we're probably going to... Uh, seeing as we're probably going to use that area for more prison expansion later on. Then I guess we could take apart the old building. Goodbye, old building. It's nice knowing you. Uh, let's go ahead and remove the roof to start off with. And just double check that I haven't forgotten anything. So we've got the wind pump going to be built down there. We're just waiting for one of the robots to actually get over to it, or, or our guy, obviously. We've got the sewage outlet, which is dealt with in the form of the septic tank now. So we'll go ahead and remove the sewage outlet. So that's not... Oh, shit, I think I just did it the wrong way around. Remove the sewage outlet so it doesn't end up... Getting rid of all of this valuable, valuable Borg excrement. And then we'll turn that, obviously, again into, into fertilizer. That way we can have a much smaller farm. But it will make kind of the equivalent amount of food, right? Obviously, a lot less work spent by our bots and, more importantly, our guy. We need a kitchen. Because we've got a kitchen bot, but it hasn't got anywhere to work right now. So we'll work on that in a second, just before I forget. Uh, so the new bathroom, more or less done. A little bit of spare room in that one this time for a shower or something along those lines. Let's get that plumbed in as soon as possible. Oh, this one's not going to be super convenient, I will admit. To do a cable, like, all the way up around here. I did talk about this yesterday in the comments section. I replied to somebody who said, uh, I don't really think that dubbed hygiene is worth the amount of effort that you put into it for the for the realism. It's not just the realism. Dubbed hygiene actually fits in with Rim Atomics. It fits in with Rimmerfeller as well. You can use the water from it to power buildings, uh, liquid cool buildings, which is a really, really cool integration. I thought it fits perfectly for a factory mod if we're pumping up, like, you know, we've got these massive industrial water pumping plants as well to fuel our factory. It just fits, it just fits the theme perfectly, but I will admit, if you're not using it for that, then it doesn't really, doesn't really work, does it? Uh, we've got two hu humans, I think that was right, two humans, uh, but we have, once again, another fucking trade camera. I don't know what it is about this mod pack, but we have traders constantly. What I think it is, is probably because Normally, we don't generate a world this large in RimWorld. This is everyone's our enemy, too. Minus 100, minus 100, minus 100. Okay. Minus 60. Plus 4. Minus 1. Those guys are, those guys will be sending trade caravans. The Empire is 0. Why does everybody fucking hate us? Divis Division H. And then we've got... 
the hell are these factions? Ultra Tech Division, minus 90, hostile. Oh, it's everybody's hostile to everyone, to be fair. And then we, we're allied with obviously our own faction, which is where the majority of, of the trade caverns coming from, both our immediate neighboring factions. The Council, Council of Hattistan, and then the Empire will probably send some trade caravans too. Unimetrix 14, Borg Station, the Tomahawk Canals there, obviously the Pirate Band. You got Savage Tribe there, Fierce Tribe. I feel like we need to make enemies, uh, sorry, friends with whoever we can. Like the Fierce Tribe, for example, we could ally with. Rough Outlander Union. I don't know why they hate us, but we can make friends with those guys too at some point. Oh, now Borg only eat nutrient paste. I'm not sure we can actually keep them then in hindsight. And I don't even believe that it's the nutrient paste type of nutrient paste. Sounds weird. They have their own specific nutrient paste dispenser, which might cause us some issues. We might need to build a big Borg prison, which in, in itself might have a lot of issues. Let's be honest. Worry about that tomorrow. Let's just get this raid done start off with. And I imagine they're just going to... What are they shooting at? Taking a hole in bot three. No, 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 no. Um, right, let's go ahead and recall all. What are you not connected to? Oh, malnutrition, right. A Borg is starving to death. I haven't got anything to feed them with. Why is that not connected? Sorry. What the hell are you talking about? Oh, the grid. We haven't got enough power in the grid. Fine, we'll deal with that in a minute. Um, damn it. We lost a Borg then, but that's not such a big deal. Raiders are dealt with. Thank you very much for that, team. Um... Shit, yeah, I didn't consider that. They do have their own, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go... If I can nutrient paste, that should, that'll answer the question. Nutrient... Uh, nanite research? That's the one. Yeah, Borg adapted nutrient synthesizer. I believe that's what we need to take Borg prisoners. They might all end up starving to death, but I'll get down a regular nutrient paste dispenser. We'll see if that's sufficient to feed them. What we could do is put one just at the end of this corridor, right? Like that. And then, uh, and then open, unlock these to prisoners, and then put another main prison door, uh, here. So that way they can't leave, but they can go out and freely access. They can go and visit each other, and more importantly, they can freely access the nutrient paste if they want it. Let's see if that works. So all these doors, or more specifically, these doors here, we want to say unlock, I believe? And that should let... I'm not something to dealing with. What do you mean? Oh, basic, maybe? Uh, let's try that again. There we are. Let's go ahead and set those to be unlocked then. And hopefully that'll let the prisoners go out and get their own food. And that's one less thing we have to fucking worry about. For tomorrow, I plan on finding a way to prevent this shit from happening. Because this is getting right on my nerves. The fact that, again, we're getting a lot of prisoners, sure. But it kind of defeats the point if we're just getting a load of free prisoners. Well, like, that alone is obviously really, really, really overpowered and kind of defeats the point. So let's go ahead and disarm the prisoners somewhat. Um, I'm hoping they can feed themselves now. Still can't. Oh, no. So the Borg have to eat adapted nutrient paste. Shit. We'll leave it there for today, then. Today has been incredibly productive. We moved from our small little temporary shelter into a much bigger one. We've got prison architect running. We've got full-blown concrete production. How are we looking on that? 701 concrete. That is going to allow us to build things like massive concrete nuclear reactors, which I'm a big fan of. The industrial set mod I, I did really used to enjoy a lot. It's just it, it tends to be a little OP, which is why I haven't played with it recently. But... Hey, it's, it's been quite a while, and, and the whole point of the series was, again, resources are more or less unlimited when we get through enough of the train. If we set things up right, the, the, the method is how are we supposed to use them all with a single man? As we've seen before, just having a single good crafter has really shot us in the ass in other Rimmel playthroughs that we've had way more than, obviously, just the one character. So that's going to be the real balancing feature, along with these constant freaking raids. Thank God for the amount of traders we've had, otherwise we would have lost a long, long time ago. Thank you all for watching. A big thank you goes out to our insane top tier level patrons for that, which this series and the little animation I did yesterday, of course, would not be possible in the first place. A big thank you goes out to Slickback, Crane Fixer, Oregon, Don underscore of underscore bones, Ninja Tree V, Zulu, Scott, Chase, Slippy Nips, Aromatic Fool, Kyle, Jackson Woodman, James Shea, Iguana Squad, Peyton Denisar, Cyric313, Zetlock, Zazzy711, Alchemia, Nostrus, and of course everyone else at the Insane Tier Levels on Patreon for making the channel possible in the first place. A big thank you to these guys. If you guys want any names, of course, feel free to throw me those over Discord, Patreon, wherever you can find me. Thank you as well to Yoram DeVries, Tonosta, Tentacle Beast, Loves Trees, Shardul, Gaz, Bespus Max, Dranmere, Derek F, Llewellyn Thomas, Smurtworm, Rob Girth, Spirelli, Demon, S Sir Thor the Swede, of all the names to get wrong, Fat Joe Isito, Peanut Gorilla, Jeebus Crust, Dion, and of course all the other patrons as well for making the series possible in the first place. See you all tomorrow for the further adventures of Robo Daddy and his prison complex.